we got up to the point last time where we talked about the life, uh, main sequence life of a star, and then we said, okay, now we got to the point where we're going to study stellar death. Stellar death is really, really interesting, how stars die. What happens to them when they die? So the first thing we learn is that stars begin their death process when the hydrogen supply in their core is depleted. Okay, so basically the hydrogen that they have that they can use to make energy is gone. Or even if it is there, it is not in usable form. They can't make energy out of it. Uh, the way that the star dies and what they end up when they die depends mainly on their mass, okay? This is very important for you to know, okay? If I ask you on the test, what's the most important characteristics of a star? What's the most important characteristic that determines what that star will be during its lifetime, how bright it will be, how hot it will be, how long it will live, how long it will take it to die, what, what will it end up as when it dies, okay? What's the single most important characteristic of a star? It's what? Mass. You could also say it's weight, okay? Mass or weight is the same. Um, so that what determines the star. For us, what's our most important characteristic? That determines what we will look like, how tall we will be, probably how long we will live, you know, all of that. Our genes, right? Our gene, the encoded into our genes is what we will look like, how tall we will be, what kind of person we will be, all of that stuff. So mass of a star is kind of like its gene, how much mass it has when it first is born, okay? So what we learn is that when a low mass star dies, or either a medium mass star dies, they will die similarly. Not necessarily exactly the same, but they will take similar paths. So we say low or medium mass stars, roughly from 0.4, the mass of the sun, 40% the mass of the sun, all the way to eight times the mass of the sun. That means the sun itself is inside of this category. It's in this category. How will they die? They will die similarly. Okay, if we look at this uh, picture, it will show us the evolutionary track that this kind of star will take. I'm going to zoom in here a little bit. See on the top, if we look at the top one, it shows, the top one shows to us the main sequence life. You see the yellow one? is the mean sequence lifetime. And then what they're saying is our sun is in this category. Our sun's main sequence lifetime is about 11 billion years, you see? And then the orange kind of thing here is when it begins to die. You see it's starting to die. And then it becomes a red giant that takes about 80 million years. You see this little piece? That thing takes 80 million years. Then it returns to being a yellow giant that's this little yellow piece. And that thing lasts another roughly 80 million years. And then it goes back to red giant, and now it's a super giant, even bigger, okay? So red giant, yellow, super, and then that lasts 15 million years. You see shorter, 80 to 15. And then from there it goes, and what we will learn is that it ejects most of the outer layers and it becomes known as a planetary nebula, okay, over here. That takes about 10,000 years for that process to take place. And then after that, the core of the star ends up as a white dwarf, okay. So that's what our sun will do. Uh, it's going to, the whole thing will take about 12.3 billion years. 12.3 billion from the beginning of its uh, main sequence lifetime, okay. Now if we look at the bottom, <clears throat> and we're going to draw this on the board in a minute. It shows to us the evolutionary track that it takes on the HR diagram. This doesn't mean the star actually is moving in the sky like it's doing this, you know. The, st the star still standing still, but it's growing, it's growing, and then its properties are changing. Because its properties are changing, its 
place on the HR diagram is changing, you see? So let's draw this one on the board. Roughly speaking, the evolutionary track of a low or medium mass star, it starts over here somewhere, goes off the main sequence, ends up here. So you see, this is 12.2 billion years, burning hydrogen in shell around the core, okay? Then over here, it ends up, there's an event known as the helium flash. What happens is helium in the core ignites, helium flash, we call it. And the star starts appearing bright. And then it returns back. So it becomes red giant, then back to yellow. Remember, it goes back to yellow and back to red again. So then it goes back to yellow. In this corner, the helium that it has is exhausted. So burning helium in the core in this stage, and then it goes back. Once the helium is exhausted, it goes back, keeps going. This one takes much quicker. So this one is slow, and then it starts getting quick. And then over here becomes a red supergiant, and then a star ejects outer layer. Over here. And then what happens to the core? The core of the star shrinks, ejected gases thin, and form planetary nebula. So basically, it just releases most of its material, okay? And ejected gases thin and form planetary nebula. What's happening to the core? The core is getting very hot. And then the core is shrinking. And then it's ending up as a white dwarf star. No fuel available for burning, star begins to cool. And then over time, it will stay as a main white dwarf for millions of years, and then over time it will become what's known as a black dwarf. Kind of like your charcoal after you've burned it, becomes turns white the next day, and you can't really use it to do anything. You know, you can't make another barbecue with the same charcoal. So it just kind of dies out. Um, so as we are putting here the events that are taking place, what we could do is place those events on this evolutionary track. See, it goes like this. Then it goes back somewhere here. You see? So where would these numbers go? Number one, the core of the star is shrinking as it's dying. The core is shrinking, why? Because it can't make energy. The gravity is taking over. And the core is heating up. And then what's happening is the energy of that is forcing the, uh, the, the outer layer of the star to expand. So number one is taking place basically as it goes up. Okay, we could put one, one, one. Two, the outer layers of the star enlarge, and then the, star, the, store, the star's outer uh, temperature starts to cool down. Okay, when it cools, it begins looking more reddish. You see, so the first red giant stage takes place, roughly lasts about a billion years, about a billion, and it becomes known as what we called earlier Roman numeral four or Roman numeral three. Sub Roman numeral four was a subgiant, Roman numeral three was a giant, you see? So step two is taking place right here. So roughly here, when it's around here, it's a Roman, Roman numeral four, okay? Somewhere here, Roman numeral four. Uh, when it's around here, it becomes Roman numeral three, somewhere around here. And it might even become a Roman numeral two if it gets big enough. <clears throat> the core finally gets hot enough, so what eventually happens is as the core is shrinking, the core is getting really hot, if it gets hot enough, it can do uh, some other process that we learned about. We called it earlier the triple alpha process. The triple alpha process, if you go back to the lecture on the sun, that's when a star takes helium, fuses it together, and forms carbon, and makes energy out of that, you see? So it says, the core finally gets hot enough to fuse helium into carbon, known as the triple alpha process. So where does three take place? <clears throat> three takes place somewhere around here, just before the corner, it reaches the corner. S step four, the helium fusing stage begins with a dramatic event called the helium flash, which is an ignition of helium. So what happens, it ignites, 
like almost like a spark, you know, very, very uh, heavy spark. And then we have a star that is experiencing helium flash. It's going to look very bright for a while. So step four takes place over here at the corner. And that's the helium flash. This is good news for the star because the star says, oh, okay, that's good. I can live longer now. I don't have to die right away. It can now make energy by fusing helium together, you see? So wh what does that do? It causes the core to stop shrinking and maintains constant temperature. So step five is taking place after it returns. And now the outer layers of the star begin coming back down and uh, getting hotter again. The core stops shrinking, the outer layers go down. The outer layers get smaller and therefore they also get hotter. They get smaller, 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 they get hotter. Star becomes a yellow giant. So step six, 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 six going back to yellow, star seven, sometime through that stage, it goes through what's known as the instability strip. The instability strip is some strip like this. You could roughly draw it like this, maybe. And so w during that time, when a star is inside of this uh, instability strip, it begins pulsating. Uh, like this, and it becomes known as a variable star. We're going to talk about them later in, the, in this lecture. It pulsates like that. So it becomes, it goes through the instability strip, becomes our, our Lyra variable, lasts roughly around 100 million years. So step seven is around here, here, or maybe even after it turns the corner. Okay, so roughly around here, I would say, while it goes through the, that space seven, seven, Eight, step eight, helium supply is depleted. Now it can no longer use helium to convert into energy. And uh, that spells doom for the star. So step eight takes place at this corner. Helium is depleted, okay? What does that do? That makes the core start shrinking again. Remember it had stopped shrinking. Now it's gonna start collapsing again. Why is it collapsing? Gravity. Gravity keeps things always shrinking if you don't have enough energy to push out. You see, gravity is going to cause you to shrink. Step nine, the core shrinks and gets hot. So where is nine happening? Nine is happening along with number seven. Seven is uh, the instability. So nine we could put here, nine, nine, nine. So the core is uh, shrinking again. 10, outer layers are expanding again. So 10 is also happening as we go up. But this time it becomes a red supergiant, even bigger. Okay? 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, you know. Second red giant stage lasts much shorter, maybe roughly around 10,000 years. Roman numeral three or two, so it becomes even bigger now, Roman numeral two. So up here could be the classification Roman numeral two, or it could even be uh, 1B Roman numeral, but most likely it'll be two. Let's see here with this picture. Uh, you can't really see it that well here. There is a red giant star here that they put, this is the outline of it. And then this is the sun. So the sun as a main sequence star, roughly, the sun as a red giant star. When it's a red giant, the diameter is one AU, okay? So one AU, what does that mean? Well, the earth is roughly around here, you see? The sun is here presently, the earth is going around like that, you see? So by the time that the sun becomes red giant, the earth burns up. You see, that's what happened to Superman's planet that caused the, them to flee, you know. And this is red giant. It's not even the red supergiant. The supergiant, it will grow even more 
and it will engulf Mars, perhaps even Jupiter, even get bigger, you know, Pro roughly around the Mars to Jupiter that big, you know. So that's just, by that time, we should have found another star to rotate around, you know, to uh, revolve around. This shows that we are observing red giant stars in other galaxies. You see, these are actual samples. Red giant stars in the star cluster M50. See, these are blue giants. They're shining bright. They're still living stars. They're not dying yet. Okay, these are main sequence stars, you see. But these ones, more reddish, more orange, see how big they are? And they are along the evolutionary track of dying, you see. Red supergiants. So by the time that the star gets to that corner, the top corner, the star ejects most of the outer layers, forming a planetary nebula. So right here at this corner, planetary nebula. Yeah. Well, no, no. Our sun is still a main sequence star. It has uh, five billion more years to live as a main sequence. So it hasn't even started one, two, three, any of those. Nothing. Yeah, good question. Our sun is still going to live five billion more years. Don't worry about it. Okay. But get ready. Five billion years after, it will start dying. Well, what, where will we be, you know? Um, it's kind of similar. The planetary nebula, I kind of compare to what happens to us when we die. When we know it's our last couple of days, we start giving things away, all those things we've collected, and we know we're not going to take it with us, you know? That's what the star is doing. See here in this picture? See here? This is the... This is an actual sample picture. See, this is a star releasing most of its mass, okay? Its outer layers. This is known as a planetary nebula. Now look at the center. You see this one, the middle one? Don't concentrate on any of these other stars. They just happen to be in the background, okay? They're, they have nothing to do with that original star. But the center one, what is that? the central one. That's the core of the star that is dying. It's releasing the star, and that's the core. That core will end up as white dwarf, you see? So it's the core of you. And all of this is everything you've accumulated, cars, homes, whatever, piano, guitar, everything. You give it away, and you say, me is what's important. The last couple of days, I'm going to concentrate on me, you know? And then, so the star releases that. This is another example. You see here? Planetary nebula. You see? Very similar appearance. And then there's the central one. Another one. You see? And then this center one is the white dwarf. So there's always, we, we see a lot of these, you know? Releases the gas, center ends up as white dwarf, okay? Okay, so 12, the core shrinks tremendously, gets hot, then cools down, then finally becomes a white dwarf. So where's 12 happening? 12, 12, 12, basically 12 is happening all along. And then the core becomes white dwarf. So basically by the time it reaches here, 13, 13, 13, Core becomes white dwarf. And then it's going to last as a white dwarf for a very, very long time until um, it becomes eventually a black, what's known as a black dwarf. The most close analogy that I can give to white dwarf is what I told you earlier. It's kind of like the charcoal that you get after you have had a good barbecue, like July 4th, let's say. Uh, and then after that, 
the next day you come back to that barbecue pit, the charcoal is still hot maybe, you don't want to put your hand on it, right? It's kind of white ash, uh, you notice that white ash. Now, can you use that same charcoal the next day to light it up and make another barbecue? No, it, but is the charcoal hot? Yeah, it's going to be hot for a while because it has resi residual heat from the first time that you used it to barbecue, right? It's, th it's hot, but you can't use it, it to light up another barbecue. That's what the white dwarf is. It's still hot. It has residual heat, but it's a dying star which will end up becoming a um, black dwarf. So if we were to categorize the main events of the evolution of this star, First, it becomes red giant. That's here. Then it experiences the helium flash at this corner. Then yellow giant, back to here, yellow. Then bigger red giant, that's this spot here. Then it releases planetary nebula. Then it ends up as white dwarf. So I think there's even a picture here. This is a visual. This is a visual of not only the star's death, but also how it is born. It starts as the interstellar cloud, collapses, forms a protostar, emits bipolar flow, becomes a sun, red giant, yellow giant, bigger red giant, releases the gas, central star becomes white dwarf. So when you see this track, you can see the visual of that, okay? Now we go to supermassive stars. They die slightly differently, or we could even say much differently, you know. Um, 